पूज्य ज्ञानवत्सल स्वामी जी जराय यथो हस्ता तथो दृष्टि यथो दृष्टि तथो मन यथो मन तथो भवा यथो भावा तथो रसा मीनिंग वेर द हैंड्स गो द आई शुड फॉलो वेर द आईज गो द माइंड शुड फॉलो वेर द माइंड गोज द इमोशंस आर जनरेटेड सो फ्री युअर माइंड टू गेट अनबायस व्यू ऑफ सिनारियो विथ दिस टीचिंग आई थ्रू भाव सर वेलकम यू ऑल इन दिस मोटिवेशनल सेशन माइंडफुलनेस एंड मेंटल रेजिलियंस Managing stress in high-pressure environments. Now I would like to call C. S. Sunil Sanghvi, sir, Vice Chairperson of Ahmedabad Branch of I C A I, to escort our dignitaries C. A. Purushottam Khandelwal, sir, Central Council Member and Conference Director, and our esteemed speaker Pujya Gnanwar Chal Swami ji. Give them a big round of applause. Thank you, sir. Now I would like to request C. A. Purushottam Khandelwal, sir, Central Council Member and Conference Director, to deliver the opening remarks. Good morning. Good morning. I request all the student who is on the last line, please settle down. It's it's a very very important session. Respected Dr. Gunan Vassal Swami. Sadhu from BAPS, Vice Chairman of Ahmedabad Branch and Chairman of Vikasa Ahmedabad, Sunil Sangvi, Past President of ICI, Sunil Bhai Taladi Sir, Chairman of BOS SECB, Mangesh Bhai Kinare, and dear students, yesterday you have heard the Honorable Governor of Gujarat, Acharya Dev Raji. and today dr gunan vassal swami will bless you dr gunan vassal swami is a life coach and eminent speaker from baps swami narayan sansthan with a outstanding academic career he graduated as a mechanical engineer from bvm college of engineering vallabh vidyanagar was initiated as a sadhu bhai his Holiness Pramukh Swami Maharaj, the fifth spiritual successor of Bhagwan Swami Narayan, Swami Narayan Sanstha, B A P S, Bhutasan Vasi Akshar Purushottam Sansthan, a such sansthan is, जो आपको एक कैसे जीवन जीना, कैसे शांत रहना, कैसे जीवन में आगे बढ़ना, धर्म का पालन करते हुए वो सिखाती है। I will not take much of the time. I Once again, request all of you to be settled in and heard properly. It's a very, very important session for all of you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir, for your enriching words. Now I would like to request. Uh, now I would like to request uh, spiritual inspiration within the Bhutasan Vasi Akshar Pushottam Swami Narayan Swami Narayan Sansthan. Inspiration of wisdom, compassion, and devotion, Pujya Gnan Vasal Swami Ji, to deliver to address our future of profe uh, future of our profession. Gunati to Aksharam Brahma Bhagavan Purusho Tamaha Jano Jana Nidam Satyam Muchate Bhava Bandana. With prostrations at the divine feet of Bhagwan Swami Narain. माई गुरु हरि प्रमुख स्वामी महाराज 
and my pragat guru hari param puja mahan swami maharaj my heartiest namaskar jai shri krishna jai shri ram jai swami narayan and a very good morning it's overwhelming highly energetic and my eyes are filled with pleasure to see such a well academically qualified youth energy here in this hall today and i am being told that in this international conference of ca students not just from all the states of our country but from the adjoining countries as well the students have joined this conference and to see so much of youthful energy converging at one place not just to better their academic progress but to learn the lessons of life and thus be an important element of the society and the nation is giving us the elder generation a promise that our country will rest on very strong shoulders that you all possess and thank you very much for that and well the topic shared with me today is mindful resilience how to handle stress in tense situations how to take care of your own self how to remain stable in circumstances and situations and people around you which are not conducive not helpful opposing or competing so basically it is all about managing stress in this atmosphere of high professional expectations in today's times where there are tremendous work pressures and pressures to deliver in deadlines well you all are in a profession where much is expected of you we have the senior sitting here sunil talati ji the ex chairman of icai mangesh ji central council member khandelwal ji who is the conference director and all the other elders that we see today they have passed through certain situations and circumstances in life at their workplace in their personal life in their family life that these situations have created high pressure high stress and people have managed it the first important aspect now listen carefully how to manage pressures and how to manage stress is acceptance of the reality acceptance of the reality that this world when you go out into the professional field when you venture into the commercial fields is not a bed of roses for you there is severe competition outside cut throat competition outside you will have to possess academic edge you will have to possess talent aid edge you will have to possess professional edge you will have to possess social connectivity edge you will have to master your profession this is the first fundamental foundational value that is expected of you you need to cultivate that value so as to handle pressures handle stress at your workplace in this ever and over demanding workplaces first accept first aspect is this acceptance of the reality that there is severe competition there are hundreds of students and hundreds of professionals of my caliber 
of caliber above me with whom I will have to work, with whom I will have to compete, so I need to prepare myself well. Am I right, Sunilji? I need to prepare myself well. If you prepare yourself well, if you have done your homework well, if you know your profession well, then you will be able to face that competition at your workplace and then you'll be able to handle pressures and stress a bit better. When Sachin Tendulkar went to Pakistan to play his first international test, he was a lad of 16. The first test was at Karachi in Pakistan. And Sachin was facing the likes of Wakar Yunus, Wasi Makram, and even spin talent like Abdul Qadir and such quickies, international class pace bowlers who could swing the deliveries on both the sides, cutting to one and a half to two feet. And they bait Sachin a lot many times. They fooled Sachin a lot many times with their pace and swing. Sachin was frustrated. He tried to hit every ball. But many a times he could not connect. Even Imran Khan was bowling against him. He got out on 15, walking back to the pavilion. Now listen carefully. Walking back to the pavilion, he experienced tremendous pressure and stress on his mind. This, is, this he writes in his own autobiography. And he tells himself, international cricket is not my cup of tea. I will not be able to perform at the international level. I'm fine with myself at the domestic level. I cannot face such quickies, such pace and swinging deliveries of Imran Khan or Wakur Yunu, Wakar Yunus or Wasi Makram. This is not my game. He walked back to the pavilion, put his bat, gloves, pads, went straight to the washroom, and he writes that I almost cried in front of the mirror that this is my first and last international appearance. International stage is not my cup of tea. After he came back from the washroom, Ravi Shastri, who was then the coach or the manager of the team, he asked Sachin to sit beside him in the viewing gallery. Ravi Shastri started a conversation with Sachin Tendulkar. Sachin ji, aap to is tarah se khel rahe te, jaise ye school cricket hai. Sachin said, Ravi ji, in logo ki pace tremendous hai. Mene in, is ye pace kabhi nahi kheli hai. Aur joh swing ho rahe te, Vakar Yunus ke aur Vasi Makram ke at 90, 95 miles per hour ki deliveries gir rahi thi, aur joh swing ho rahi thi. I think international cricket is not my cup of tea. Tab Ravi Shastri ne ye baat sikhai, acceptance of the reality of competition. To handle pressure and stress. Because we are not accepting the reality, aap ye soch rahe ho to chalo, CA ban jayenge, job mil jayegi, koi company mein bad jayenge, practice 5, 7, 10 saal ke saath khol denge. Jitna jaldi aur asani se aap ye bol sakte hai, itna jaldi aur asan wo baat nahi hai. Accept the reality. Ravi Shastri told Sachin Tendulkar that I saw your innings sitting here and you are playing like a schoolboy. You are not playing like an international player. You are trying to hit each and every ball. That you can do in your school cricket. You can't do in international cricket because as you are talented with the bat, this trial they are highly talented and highly experienced and a couple of them have played international cricket for more number of years than your existence. You have to respect them as well. Don't try to hit every delivery. First lesson of preparing yourself for the next encounter. You have to prepare yourself, do your homework well. Ravi Shastri gave him the second advice that while playing a test match, don't look at the scoreboard for the, first fifth, for the first half an hour. First 30 minutes, don't look at the scoreboard. 
So you all study CS students for the first three years, don't look at your salary, just work like a donkey. But smart working, not just donkey working. Hard work like it, but smart working. First two or three years, don't look at the scoreboard. Don't peep into somebody's career. Ki, yaar, ye mere si hua tha. Inko inka ho mil gaya. Never that. Accept your situations and your circumstances in life. Ravi Shastri tells Sachin Tendulkar, don't look at the scoreboard for the first half an hour when you are at the crease. Just settle yourself there. Settle your eyes on the field. Get the line and length of the deliveries that are being bowled at you. Try to get into the opposition team's plans how to get you out. Try to protect yourself against the opposition plans. This is all the preparedness that you need on the field. So Ravi Shastri gave million dollar advice to Sachin Tendulkar. Next test, that was the second test at Faisalabad. Sachin Tendulkar perfectly followed Ravi Shastri's advice. Doing his homework mentally and emotionally, which made him more stronger and stable. He scored a 50, he got out at 59, but then he cemented his place in the playing 11, went on to become the god of cricket with 100 international tons. So pressures and stresses are part of life. Remember, pressure and stress are inevitable. How to manage it, we learn it. The first aspect, accept the competition, prepare yourself well. Then you'll be able to handle the pressures and stresses well. Second thing, failures should be met. I am doing this word. If you don't get a life in the life, If you can learn 10 things from your successes, you will learn 20 things from your failures. So failures are necessary in life. They are absolutely necessary. Sometimes because of your mistake, you fail. Sometimes you are less prepared, you fail. Sometimes even when you perform well, still circumstances don't favor you, you fail. Sometimes you are the best in the team, but office politics fails you. It's part of the system. So the second aspect of handling pressure and stress at your workplace, mindful resilience, is that you tell yourself that I'm definitely going to meet failures in my course, in my journey of life. Those failures may be in personal life, in family life, in social life, in your professional life. At the moment, you're all students. So maybe in your academic life, you will meet failures. Usse gabra mat jana. Bat mat jana, ruk mat jana, chalte rena. So, because failures are part of life. I have read more than 500 biographies and autobiographies from Sachin Tendulkar to Nelson Mandela to George Washington to Abraham Lincoln to Winston Churchill to Pramukh Swami Maharaj, everybody. They have seen failures in life. They have seen big failures in life. It makes you strong. It gives, rather opens up new avenues for you to venture out. It creates new opportunities. Failures make you more friends. People have a belief that success makes more friends. Success makes companions, not friends. Success makes Companions. Party time enjoy le karne ke liye jo aate hain wo companions bolte hain. Success will give you more companions. Failures will identify for yourself your best friends in life. 
तो ये पांच छह कारण मैंने आपको दिए हैं आई गेव यू द फाइव सिक्स रीजन वाई फेलियर इज नेसेसरी इन लाइफ सो फरगेट हैविंग टेंशन इन योर लाइफ वॉट इफ आई फेल इन माई एग्जाम्स नेवर यूज योर फेलियर एज अ स्टेपिंग स्टोन यूज योर फेलियर टू कल्टिवेट मोर इनर स्ट्रेंथ यूज योर फेलियर टू एक्सेस द बाउंड्रीज ऑफ डेरिंग बियॉन्ड द कैन ऑफ ह्यूमन इंटेलिजेंस डॉक्टर ए पी जे अब्दुल कलाम इन दर नाइनटीन फिफ्टी सेवन वेन टू देहरादून बिकॉज ही हैड अ ड्रीम टू बिकम अ पायलट ही अपियर इन द रिटर्न टेस्ट he passed it he appeared in the oral test the results were awaited till evening the institute wanted eight students they had in that batch a facility for eight people so they wanted eight who would pass out the exams in the evening abdul kalam came to know that he is not in the selected top 8 he ranked 9th so he missed the passing mark maybe just by a few marks like any other student any other human being he felt a bit depressed he felt a bit dejected when he left from rameshwar for these exams when he left his guruji had told him that you are going all the way to dehradun don't miss out to have the holy bath in the ganga river so then he said okay i had my exams i failed okay they did not accept me let me go to the next assignment so he went to the ganga river at rishikesh and had a fine bath then he came out of the river and he just was looking around where to go now and he saw an ashram he went there he met he met the saints there koi sant unko mile wo sant pehchan gaye ki kalam matlab abdul kalam ke chehre pe tension hai stress hai this dr kalam has written in his own autobiography the saint called him near and asked i see some tension and some pressure on your face is there an happening that was not according to your liking then abdul kalam narrated him the whole story that i failed this exams it was my dream now what to do how would i go back to my village because my entire village had given me a wonderful farewell and they were all expecting me because i was the most intelligent engineering student of my village of my whole region of my whole caste at that moment and how would i be able to show my face the saint said don't get worried about this failure is part of life but believe in yourself that you are able to make it if not today tomorrow and more importantly the saint said perhaps god has designed a better plan for you this is the most encouraging word that could ever exist in anybody's life when you fail tell yourself god has some definite bigger plans better plans for me when you fail don't get dejected and depressed don't get into stress and tension the topic that has been given to me mindful resilience a mindful resilience is telling yourself failure is not the end of the road one failure doesn't design or define your career one failure does not define or design your life your personality or your character anybody who is a name in the society anybody who is sitting at the top in any field has gone through many failures in life sunil ji am i right or wrong absolutely he says out of all his experience so first thing when you fail is tell yourself i am not going to get depressed or dejected second tell yourself i'll try again with better hard work with smart hard work third thing tell yourself god has definitely designed a much better plan for me than that is what in my mind let me as it as it is told in the maharashtra folklore charer veti charer veti keep walking keep walking keep walking so the second aspect of handling stress and pressure at your workplace or in your life is never be afraid of failure 
embrace failure with your hands wide open hug failure that okay you are also part of my life and remember one thing nobody has shown that is nobody shines in life only by successes only if he has seen failures and still walked still climbed the mountains and sitting there only he becomes an inspiration people with people who are born with golden spoons they are never a source of inspiration people who have struggled through failures and reached at the top they create a legacy they are inspirations so the second important aspect is that third important aspect of facing pressures facing or managing stress at your workplace is bettering your human relations with people see individual talent can win matches only teamwork can win tournaments individual talent can win matches but only teamwork can win tournaments this is a principle so believe aap mein se koi ca exam mein national scoring hoga national ranking mein aayenge to collar khada karke ego mein mat aa jana because you will need help of people at your workplace to succeed you will need family support to succeed you will need a good friend circle to give you comfort in times of pressures and failures to succeed you will need good books reading to energize you time and again for success so for success not just your academic qualification from books to friends to family members to support staff in your team to your working colleagues to your office bearers you will need capital n capital e capital e and capital d n e e d you will need all these supports in life when you are in pressure when you are in tension the best key for you to come out of that atmosphere is good human relations with people around you so that you get help so that you get support so that people would come forward to you and try to tell you that i am with you that is the biggest stress buster that is the biggest pressure buster according to harvard university survey listen this carefully this is a very important survey especially applicable to all the students who are following some fine professional courses as you all are harvard university survey says that people lose their jobs basically for two reasons one reason counts for 85% of the lost jobs another reason just 15% then harvard university conclusion paper writes at the end of this statement listen very carefully 15% of the jobs lost by people is because of something less on technical expertise in their subject but 85% of the jobs lost by people is because of their inability to connect with people work with people and make some good teams so human relations with people counts more than your academic degrees human relations with your working colleague counts more than your talent to come up with projects and finish the projects again individual academics individual talent can win up a project can do a project but to have a wonderful career of 50 or 40 or 50 years in your profession a dignified career you need a good teamwork and good human relations with people
our guru prabhuk sami maharaj he created this baps swaminand sansta the organization that i come from we are one of the largest organizations in the world with a permanent seat in the united nations as an ngo we run more than 1500 hospitals hostels schools colleges community centers sanskar kendras mandirs and akshardhams all over the world how many of you have been to akshardham at gandhinagar or delhi just raise your hands all of you i come from that organization pramuk sami maharaj was just fifth standard pass forget english he could not speak a good grammatically correct sentence in hindi and yet he created 1500 institutions of social service in a span of 45 years that too after his age of 51 because he became the guru he became the in other words in your professional language he started his career at 51 from his age of 51 to 95 he created 1500 institutions of social service that is gifting an institute of social service either a hospital or a hostel or a school or a college whatever every 15th day of his life for 45 years कोई सी ए को आप मिलो कोई सक्सेसफुल चार्टर्ड अकाउंटेंट को आप मिलो उनको पूछना कि आप हमारी फ्रेटर्निटी में भारतवर्ष में तो होंगे शायद पांच लाख चार्टर्ड अकाउंटेंट्स होंगे पूछना कि हमारी फ्रेटर्निटी में एक भी चार्टर्ड अकाउंटेंट ऐसा है जिन्होंने हर पंद्रहवें दिन एक नए शहर में एक नई ऑफिस खोली हो सुनील भाई छेवा कोई क्या थी हो Pramukh Sami Maharaj created an institute of social service every 15th day. He initiated 1100 saints like us and more than 800 of them are graduates, postgraduates, chartered accountants, doctors and engineers. More than 150 saints in the organization they have graduated out of Ivy League colleges, Harvard, Stanford, Carnegie Mellon, Yale such type. And more than 50 saints have graduated from such colleges. they are born american and british citizens more than 150 of them ye maine aapko isliye kaha ki aapko ye na lage ki kuch chala nahi hoga kuch jama nahi hoga isliye yahan aake baith gaya zyada tar logo ko hota hai ki kuch chala nahi hoga jama nahi hoga isliye yahan aake baith gaye i think all of you are under the age of 30 all the students sitting here under the age of 30 ha ah, 2025 that means under the age of 30 i am giving the upper limit दो तीन ट्रायल वाले की लिमिट भी मैंने अंदर ले ली वाई सेट दिस आई फिनिश्ड माई इंजीनियरिंग बिफोर यू ऑल वेर बॉर्न आई फिनिश माई इंजीनियरिंग थर्टी टू ईयर्स बैक तो सोच के समझ के यहां आए यहां क्या करना है वो पता है वो कर रहे हैं कहने की बात यह थी कि प्रमुख स्वामी महाराज सच अ सिंपल मैन but he could create this why he was an expert he was a master and not using this words for him but then it was natural from his heart that he could connect with all class of people he could connect with all generations of people that connectivity that selflessness because he lived his motto in the good of others lies our own आज मैं आप सभी को एक की देता हूं एक मास्टर की देना चाहता हूं कनेक्टिविटी कैसे बढ़ाएं, फ्रूटफुल कनेक्टिविटी कैसे बढ़ाएं, पर्पसफुल रिलेशनशिप्स कैसे बढ़ाएं, और हमारे रिलेशनशिप्स में ट्रस्ट कैसे बढ़ाएं? आई थिंक दिस इज द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट फैक्टर इन लाइफ ये सर नो and this is the key to your success to ek jeevan mantra pramukh sami maharaj ka hai wo aap hriday mein likh lena wo jeevan mantra pe ve jiye aur itni sari badi sanstha unhone khadi ki and that was in the good of others lies our own in the progress of others rests our own how is this practical now listen carefully whomever you meet 
greeting them from a smile to an inner wish that how can I help this person today? How can I make this person happy today? ये भावना अंतर में एक बार प्रकट करना प्रकट करने के लिए एक बार मन में बोलना कि ये व्यक्ति मुझे प्रथम जीवन में प्रथम बार मिल रहा है या दसवीं बार मिल रहा है ये मुलाकात के बाद मेरे पास से कुछ वो लेके जाना चाहिए ये मुलाकात के बाद मैं उसको किस तरह से ये मुलाकात में मदद रूप हो सकू हाउ केन आई मेक इम हैप्पी ऑलवेज कीप द एटीट्यूड फ्रॉम योर फेशियल एक्सप्रेशन टू बॉडी लैंग्वेज टू योर इनर सेल्फ How can I make people who come in contact with me more happy? How can I make him enriched in in his meeting with me? ये attitude से आपके मन में उस व्यक्ति के प्रति अच्छे विचार आएंगे. That would reflect, that would be reciprocated, and the bonds of connection will go strong and trustworthy. This is the secret of human relations. and how does it help i'm coming i'm right into the topic how does it help in reducing your stress and tension because when you have stress when you have tension when you are under pressure this will be the people who will become your support samajh sakte hain ki shayad koi aapke kaam mein support na kar sake lekin phone ya text kare ki koi takleef ho to bolna hum aapke sath hain ऑफिस के बाद नीचे आए तो वो वहां खड़े हैं कि लेट्स गो एंड हैव हाफ एन आवर ऑफ रिलैक्सेशन आई एम विथ यू दैट इज आल्सो बिग सपोर्ट सो बेटर द ह्यूमन रिलेशंस बेटर यू विल बी एट योर वर्क प्लेस बेटर यू विल बी एबल टू मैनेज योर स्ट्रेस एंड टेंशन बेटर यू विल बी एबल टू टेक अप वंडरफुल प्रोजेक्ट्स बिग प्रोजेक्ट्स फिनिश दोस प्रोजेक्ट्स ऑन टाइम एंड बेटर योरसेल्फ एज अ पर्सनालिटी एंड एज अ कैरेक्टर दिस इज द पावर ऑफ ह्यूमन रिलेशंस और एक अच्छी बात है सी अंटिल द नाइंटीज इट वॉज अ कॉमन थिंकिंग इन द पीपल दैट दोज हु आर हाई ऑन आई क्यू दे कुड मैनेज थिंग्स वेल दे कैन वर्क वेल एंड दे कैन लीड वेल बट आफ्टर द नाइंटीज दे फाउंड दैट समटाइम्स पीपल हु आर हाई ऑन आई क्यू पीपल हु आर हाई ऑन आई क्यू येट दे वेर मैनेज people who were high on iq yet they were managed by people who were less on iq people who were high on iq they were managed by people who were less on iq but more on eq emotional quotient see iq matlab intelligence quotient matlab you think rationally you deal effectively with the situation there is a pur purposeful interaction what is eq it is all about empathy you know people well you can understand their feelings and their thoughts you can understand the feelings and thoughts of your own self and you can well connect with people so ye 1990s ke baad pata chala ki iq se to jyada eq wale log lead karte hain and again the scenario changed because from iq to eq it changed especially in the silicon valley hum garva lete hain ki hamare it graduates hain wo silicon valley mein jaate hain 100000 dollars ki salary hai 2000 dollars 200000 dollars ki salary hai half a million dollar ki salary hai who is paying them who is giving them the paycheck it is given by sometimes by this white smart managers who are not even bcom but they know how to handle people they know how to extract work from them kisi ko 2.5 lakh dollar ki tankha dete hain lekin uske dimag mein se 1 million dollar ka kaam le lete hain so that was a change of scenario again at the turn of the millennium after 2000 again the scenario changed that people with high spiritual quotient sq they could lead people with high iq and high eq that we saw in the life of pramukh swami maharaj and today our guru mahan sai maharaj that they could lead the organization well because to lead a corporate is comparatively much easier than to lead an ngo why because at the corporate workplace you pay and smile at the corporate workplace 
the work culture is pay and smile. That is, the employees, they like the pay of their employer, so there is a smile on the employee's face. And the employer likes the work of the employee, so there is a smile on his face. So it's called pay and smile relationship. One is paying in work and one is paying in money. In the NGOs that we work full time, it is not pay and smile, it is serve and smile. To handle the affairs, to come up with projects, and successfully execute it in the society when it comes to servants by relationship is much tougher. I've been talking since 32 years on national international platforms. I don't charge a single penny for my talks. Even today when I'm talking to you, I have not charged a single penny for talking. It's my selfless service to society. <laughs> to work, to work, in a servant smart relationship structure is more difficult than a corporate structure. Because there is no higher and fire. Here there is no higher and fire. Everyone has a mind, 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 a mind. So SQ, which is higher, is a spiritual quotient. They can lead people with IQ and EQ. What is that SQ? I give a wonderful book to everybody. If you have a piece of paper and a pen, definitely write it. Or if not, if you have a mobile, just you can type it. I'll give you the title of the book and the name of the authors. I definitely recommend all the students to read this book. Ye book ab jarur padna. The title of the book is Spiritual Intelligence, The Ultimate Intelligence. Again, the title of the book is Spiritual Intelligence, The Ultimate Intelligence. Co-authored by Ian Marshall and Dana Zohar. In which they write that every professional must definitely develop spiritual intelligence. What is the spiritual intelligence? I'm giving you the gist of this book in just two lines. But that doesn't mean that you don't read, okay? They said that these are the eight factors, these are the eight values that a spiritual intelligent person possesses, or the vice versa. If you find these eight values in yourself, you are spiritually intelligent. First, flexibility to change. This helps you in handling pressure and tension and depression as well at your workplace and in your family or personal life. This is called mindful resilience, that you are flexible. If you find, now listen carefully, because the biggest wars in the world, they happen in the boardroom. The most crucial wars, they happen in the... And now when I am talking about this in the boardroom, there is a war in the world of boardrooms. Is it right? And what is that war? My opinion is better than yours. My preparation of project report is better than yours. I am more qualified and experienced than you. Isliye, you have to believe in what I say. And the younger one is saying, okay, fine, you are more experienced. But I have come with modern education. You did your graduation from this institute in India. I did it from LSE in London. Ye war chalo reta hai. To handle pressure and stress in your boardroom in future. I hope and pray that all of you sitting here one day enter some boardroom. I hope and pray that all of you sitting here someday enter some boardroom. Matlab, you are a director of a company. My prayers for all of you, definitely. Lekin vaha. Workplace se jada tensions or jada stresses, pressures aate hain. Sunil ji, am I right? Jada aate hain. Us vakt flexibility ka sadgun seekh lena. If you find somebody's opinion or somebody's project report well prepared, then you accept it. Give in. Appreciate it. That flexibility will puncture the balloon of pressure and stress on you. This is spiritual intelligence. 
उस वक्त ईगो मत रखना अरे यार मैंने तीन रात तक नींद नहीं ली और ये प्रोजेक्ट रिपोर्ट तैयार कर हाउ कैन समबडी इज रिपोर्ट इज एक्सेप्टेड मोर देन मी ये होगा रिमेन प्रिपेयर फॉर इट सिर्फ उसका अच्छा इसलिए एक्सेप्ट हुआ इसलिए नहीं शायद वो मैनेजमेंट से नजदीक है वो व्यक्ति इसलिए भी शायद आपका अच्छा है तो भी रिजेक्ट होगा यू विल हैव टू फेस एवरीथिंग दिस इज अ बॉर्ड रूम वॉर उस वक्त फ्लेक्सिबिलिटी रखना अकॉर्डिंग टू हावर यूनिवर्सिटी स्टडी दे हैव पुट फॉरवर्ड द लेटेस्ट डेफिनेशन ऑफ इंटेलिजेंस आफ्टर एट ईयर्स ऑफ सर्वे एंड रिसर्च they come up with this words and the words are i'm quoting it word to word and letter to letter flexibility to change is intelligence ye intelligence ki nahi definition hai flexibility to change when you find something better than you change accept it that flexibility is your ultimate intelligence which not only gives you a support to grow it definitely puts you in a better position to lead your organization because you have a heart where you can have spaces for other people other ideas which are not perhaps going along your lines you are a better manager of team and opinions you can become a better team leader by flexibility flexibility to change aur bhi sare sadgun hain और भी सारे ये पूरी बुक में बातें लिखी आई जस्ट नेम यू दिस फर्स्ट इज फ्लेक्सिबिलिटी सेकंड इज सेल्फ अवेयरनेस बी सेल्फ अवेयर व्हाट आई मस्ट डू व्हाट आई कैंट डू व्हाट आई मस्ट स्पीक व्हाट आई मस्ट नॉट स्पीक हाउ शुड आई बिहेव हाउ शुड आई नॉट be extremely self aware of your facial expressions body language and attitudes that you put forward because a single mistake in self awareness can ruin your career your 20 your 30 and your 40 years of professional career can go into gutters by a single mistake of self awareness this is spiritual intelligence you have to cultivate it to handle the pressures and stress that may get generated out of your lack of self awareness ek prasang se aapko samjhana chahunga 2018 mein there was a cricket test match going between australia and south africa in south africa by the tea time on the third day the captain steve smith who was also a player in the world cup team of uh, australia he was then the captain he could gauge the game and uh, he could feel that we will lose this game at tea break he approached his opening batsman david warner who was again the opening batsman in the australian side for this world cup team he said david perhaps we may lose the match david said yes from the situation that is going on perhaps we would lose what to do we don't want to lose this match and david warner came up with an idea he missed self awareness self awareness of sportsmanship self awareness of ethical practices at your workplace one mistake can cost you not just millions or crores of rupees it can cost you your career it can cost you your family it can cost you cost you your physical mental and emotional health it can ruin everything in your life David Warner came up with the idea that we must take the new ball after tea break and ask one of our players to stand on the mid on balls bowl most of them go to the mid on when they have just a casual defense and when the ball comes to him he should bring out the sandpaper from his pocket and rub on one side of the seam eventually after 5 7 overs one side of the seam of the ball would be rubbed and would be rough and the other side other other side would be shining bright so when on one side of the seam when the ball is shining and one side it is made rough the pace bowlers they get reverse swing on the wicket and the reverse swing at 90 miles per hour is very deadly for the batsman so cameron bancroft 
a player in the playing 11 was selected to do this job. So he went out into the field after the tea break with a sandpaper in his pocket. Whenever the ball came up to him, he would bring out this sandpaper and rub against it. Two, three, five times he could do it. Once CCTV camera caught it. And the replay was played again by the ethics committee because it was reported to from the studio. That this, is, he is rubbing. See this video again. It was replayed. And the officials of South Africa cricket, they came to know that he is rub, rubbing some object against the ball. He was immediately called out of the field. What were you doing? No, it was actually like my finger got hurt because of the fielding. So I was just like taking care of my finger. No, there is an object in your hand. And you put it back inside your pocket. See this footage. And he confessed that it is a sandpaper. He brought it out, photographed, filmed everything. Why were you doing this? Because my captain told me. Call the captain out. Steve Smith was brought out. What did you teach your player? He said, I don't know exactly, but it was David Warner who designed the plan. Call David Warner out. And all three were questioned, interrogated, and they confessed to this plan which is absolutely unethical, against the spirit of the game. They fell to this low level to win. Ye aap sabhi yaad rakhna. Aap jab practice mein jayenge, tab opportunities milegi. Ki ye raaste pe agar mein chal jau, thodi unethical hai, lekin paise bahut milenge. Aap chalenge, paise bhi milenge. That first step on that path, you have decided to kill yourself. It is suicide for you. Remember that. Because when you will be exposed, all your academics, all your talents, all your experiences, all your social connectivity will become zero. You will become zero from hero within seconds. Australian cricket board was noticed. Flying immediately. Your players have gone into a big scandal. ACB officials, they flew in. Prime Minister of Australia was noted. Prime Minister of Australia told the Australian Cricket Board Chairman, go into deep investigation and whoever is guilty should not be spared. Australian cricket officials came to South Africa. They interrogated their own players. They confessed. Steve Smith, one-year ban. Not being allowed even to finish this test match. Beach mein se utha liya. David Warner, one-year ban. Cameron Bearcraft said, bhai sahab, main Captain ki agna ka follow kar raha tha. Nine years ban. Sorry, nine months. Sorry, nine months ban. Nine months ban kar diya. Fir to chota mo, choti badi cricket matches, leagues khelte the Sydney, uh, IPL, Canada khelne gaye. Six months after the ban, still six months into the ban, Steve Smith was interviewed. Why did you do this? Why did you choose this path? And you are a player, and Steve Smith is a batsman of the caliber of Virat Kohli, of the caliber of Rohit Sharma, of the caliber of Babar Azam. A person of your caliber, and a captain of the Australian team. Why did you choose this unethical path? Steve Smith bole, ab ye bhi yaad rakhna. Wo kya bole the? I'm quoting him word to word and letter to letter. Steve Smith bole, that there is a culture in the Australian cricket board. Win at all costs. Don't develop that culture at your workplace. Second sentence, Steve Smith bole. The Australian cricket board officials tell us that we don't pay you to play. We pay you to win. Ye culture we must develop karna. Aapki institute mein, jahan bhi aap bhavisha mein jaye. Paach saal ke baad, pachis saal ke baad, pachas saal ke baad. Win at all costs is inspirational words, motivational words, and energizing words not to be put into practice. They were told that we pay you to win. We don't pay you to play. So, aapke employees bhavishya mein aapke saath ya aap apne employees ke saath ye culture mat develop karna ke we are paying you to, to get good projects, big clients. 
वी आर नॉट जस्ट पेइंग यू टू वर्क एट दिस वर्क प्लेस भाई करते हैं काम करते करते अच्छे प्रोजेक्ट्स और क्लाइंट्स भी मिल जाएंगे दिस इज अ रॉन्ग कल्चर सो माइंड वेल दिस इज स्पिरिचुअल इंटेलिजेंस कॉल्ड सेल्फ अवेयरनेस when a person is self aware he is absolutely in a state of mind that he doesn't make any private or public mistake after pramukh sami maharaj passed away in the year 2016 in gandhinagar we had the shraddhanjali sabha the prayer meet at that time a leading personality of gujarat who was associated with since more than 40 years with pramukh sami maharaj and known our organization baps for 40 years he said that i am in public life since 40 years I've been in association with many projects of BAPS. Never, ever have I found Pramukh Sami Maharaj. Of course, used to give his opinions about uh, issues at state level or national, international levels. Never, ever have I found that any words of Pramukh Sami Maharaj has created any type of controversy in the society. So this is self-awareness. After making a big mistake, you can't say, "Le mane to ani khabarat no thi." No. Not allowed. मुझे तो इसका पता ही नहीं था यार ये लॉ है मुझे पता ही ना था Nothing. Not allowed. A mistake is a mistake and you will have to face it. Self-awareness. मैंने बोला था कि मैं explain नहीं करूंगा तो भी मैंने दो तो explain कर दिया बाकी का just list out कर देता हूं आप अच्छी तरह से पुस्तक पढ़ लेना Third is an ability to face and use the suffering of life. This is spiritual intelligence. This decreases your stress and tension. Fourth, an ability to design something for your own self out of seeing something. That is an ability to be inspired by a vision. Fifth, an ability to see connection between diverse things. Sixth, an ability to cause as little harm as possible. Seventh or eighth, दोनों important हैं. professional people ke liye very important hai seventh is an ability to ask and probe fundamental questions and eighth an ability to work against a convention these are the eight qualities if you possess if you try to possess if you practice on it you develop spiritual intelligence which is much higher than intelligent quotient which is much higher than emotional quotient you become a team leader you become an organizational leader you create a space at your workplace you create a space in your profession and you create a legacy for yourself so try to focus on these values fir se ek bar dohrana chahunga aapke pustakon mein jo shabd likhe hain aur jo gyan hai wo sirf aapko 10% madad karenge apne profession mein 90% is your values virtues attitudes thinking expressions connectivity human relations kaam karegi ये सिद्धांत है और ये सिद्धांत को पकड़ के चलेंगे तो जीवन में आनंद भी आएगा सफलता भी मिलेगी एक अंतिम पांच मिनट बात कर लेता हूं मुझे एक घंटे की बात हुई थी सवा ग्यारह को मैंने चालू किया था बार दस हुई है इन फाइव मिनट सेल फिनिश ये बोल रहे हैं खंडेवाल जी आराम से बात करना हम संत को आराम से बोलेंगे तो वी आर यूज टू टॉकिंग विथ क्लॉक्स एंड कैलेंडर बोथ एक और अच्छी जो बढ़िया बात है आफ्टर दिस आई क्यू क्यू एन एस क्यू इज कॉन्स्टेंटली थिंक हाउ कैन आई मेक अ पॉजिटिव चेंज इन माई सेल्फ सो आई हैंडल माई सिचुएशन एंड हैंडल पीपल अराउंड मी हु आर कनेक्टेड विथ मी बेटर फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लेट मी आस्क ऑल ऑफ यूर सिंपल क्वेश्चन हाउ मेनी ऑफ यू रियली बिलीव दैट समवेयर बिकॉज आई लैक समथिंग I need to make some positive change in myself to better fit my ecosystem. How many of you believe that? Thank you very much for this. When you have raised hands that means you are introspective. You are self-aware that this habit I need to improve. This type of overthinking I need to reduce or cut out. This type of social association I think is not helpful to me in my academics or my personal life I must leave this to friends away Some positive changes in yourself that makes you a better fit in your own ecosystem And when you make that positive change 
some of the stresses, some of the tensions and some of the depressions, they just get away from you. They just don't be in your stride. They will never disturb you and you will be better placed. So this is a mindful resilience, changing your own mind. I need to make a change. Again, a good book, Stephen Covey, one of the most decorated management gurus upon this planet ever. He has written this book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. After that, he has written the book, The Eighth Habit. In the seven habits that the effective people had, which Stephen Covey found, was first proactive, second is begin with the end in mind, third is putting first things first, fourth is think win-win, fifth is seek first to understand and then to be understood, sixth is synergy, and seventh is sharpen the saw. But the eighth habit that he wrote is a beautiful habit that every professional must cultivate. When he wrote this book in the year 2006, he came to India for the promotion of this book. He did four seminars in five days in India, Bang, uh, Mumbai, Bangalore, Hyderabad or Calcutta, I don't know, and then the fourth one was in Delhi. The, the seminar that he conducted in Mumbai in the year 2006 had 23,000 rupees per delegate fee. And the registration opened just 24 hours before the show time online and 700 capacity hall that is 700 tickets each of 23,000 in the year 2006 got sold off in 86 seconds from all over the world all over the country because the name was big Stephen Covey in that six to seven hour seminar Actually, Stephen Covey appeared on the stage only four to five times, sometimes for 10 minutes, sometimes for 15 minutes, sometimes for maybe five, 10 minutes. Rest is managers and video shows were carrying on the show. Next day, a leading newspaper in Mumbai, DNA, they carried out an article about this seminar and what was taught to the delegates. Clearly written that if you have not attended yesterday's seminar, you read this article, you'll get the gist of it. In that article, it was again written that if you can't read the whole article, read this box item, the one sentence which Stephen Covey again and again, while appearing on the stage in person, talked to his audience. And that sentence was, again I'm quoting it letter to letter. Remember well, the essence of the whole book by Stephen Covey, the title of the book is Eighth Habit. And the sentence is, don't expect others to change. First change yourself, others will follow. <laughs> Don't expect others to change. First change yourself, others will follow. Hamara attitude or ego kya kehta hai? I'm perfectly all right. It is the other person who has to accommodate me and change to settle me. Hayana, first introspect. Do I need some change that my friend accepts me well? Do I need to change somewhere that my office working colleague accepts me well? Do I need to make a positive change in myself so that my immediate boss to whom I report has some positive attitudes for me. Introspect. Life is not working with body and mind alone. It is more with working on your emotional self so as you better your mental self and your physical self. You have to work on your emotional self because that is going to reflect out through your mentality and through your body. That is your physical expressions. Don't expect others to change. First change yourself and then others will follow. This is the golden, golden advice from a top class management guru. So, again this is very an important aspect of life. This reduces your stress because you have changed yourself for the better. You are into a positive state of mind. You are into a much better positive state of mind. And when you have changed yourself, you will be less concerned with people's faults. Pata aapko? According to a study, more than 15 to 18% of office time, even in high-ranking professionals, 
it goes into gossiping it goes into office politics it goes into leg pulling at office place am i right some elders are handsomely smiling so they have gone through all these experiences 15 to 18% of your working time that means of your working ability that means of your precious 70 or 80 years of life upon this earth 15 to 18% of your work time goes into these three things unnecessary gossiping about a working colleague leg pulling of a working colleague and setting up of an atmosphere of non collaboration at your workplace this will increase your stress and tension at your workplace mindful resilience is everybody working with me is my second family tell yourself before you go to office in future that my family at home is my first family that means your spouse in future your children in future maybe your parents living with you this is my first family and my working colleagues at my office is my second family take it as a second family develop this attitude when i talk to professionals i definitely want to teach and preach them this unless and until you take your take your office bearers your working colleagues as your second family you won't be able to enjoy your time at your workplace as you enjoy your time at your family and i think all of us are concerned because we all want to enjoy our office equally as our home isn't it yes or no we all want to enjoy our time at our office of the level that we are enjoying our time at with our family at home that comes only when you keep an attitude develop it that this is my second family so never see their faults and never discuss them why are you discussing your office bearers faults are you 100% complete are you 100% perfect tell me a yes or no everybody even i when i am talking to you of all this this is not all things that i have mastered because but then we talk more we listen to it more we read more gradually we can master it we are all on the same path but more of talking more of listening more of reading of this gradually strengthens you simple never ever talk faults of people around you accept them fully and you know this will be the best habit that you could ever develop for a successful marriage when somebody is your wife she is mrs india for you and when somebody is your husband he is mr india for you forget all the faults accept them fully only then you will enjoy your life am i talking something sensible or not give me a yes or no that means people that you have accepted in your life like your spouse like your relatives your cousins your friends your working place colleagues people who are in your life you should accept them fully enjoy relationship don't talk about the faults and negatives because if there is two negatives a and b in him c and d is in yours simple talk positive only yaar ye an acha kaam karta hai ye table pe baitha hai wo bahut punctual hai time pe aa jata hai wo table pe jo baitha hai uski jo neatness hai kaam karne ki adbhut hai wo table pe jo baitha hai na uska reporting bahut acha hai pick up pearls at your office place don't pick up rubber then it will decrease your stress and tension at your workplace this is spiritual intelligence you have to develop these are some of the lessons these are some of the lessons that corporate management needs to learn and definitely needs to learn from ngo managements to inke jaisa result produce kar payenge and lastly when arjun was in severe stress on the battle of kurukshetra he laid down his arms i cannot fight my friends my elders and my gurus krishna said my god if this guy puts it down if this gentleman puts it down how would this whole scene go it would be difficult to win the dharma yudh arjun was in severe stress and tension even depression i will not whole army was standing in front of him the opposition army and his own army would get demoralized if arjun gets off the chariot 
वॉट डिड कृष्ण डू एट दैट टाइम सी मॉडर्न डे स्ट्रेस मैनेजर्स होते हैं ना आप भी मिलेंगे होंगे हम भी मिले हैं जो मॉडर्न डे स्ट्रेस मैनेजर्स है ना कि आपको ऑफिस में स्ट्रेस आए पर्सनल लाइफ में स्ट्रेस आए तो आप हमारी ऑफिस पे आ जाना अच्छी अच्छी तरकीबें आपको बताएंगे पेंट योर ऑफिस ग्रीन गो ऑन अ लॉन्ग वॉक एट द बीच Keep looking at the sunrise every day for ten minutes. <laughs> All these remedies to stress and tension management is like watering the branches, not watering the roots. What is watering the roots to eradicate all tension and stress? Mindful resilience is watering the roots, and what is that? Krishna tells Arjun, Man Mana Bhava. keep your focus on me believe what i say follow me at this moment keep your thoughts keep your minds aside do what i say second thing he says tarati shokam atmavit believe yourself to be the soul you are not this physical body according to the philosophy we have passed through many births and deaths believe yourself to be the soul not this physical body third thing he says karmanya vadhikaraste ma phaleshu kadachana he tells arjun and does all of us this is one of the most important advices that our job is to do our duty well to the best of resources that we have with us results krishna says god decides simple hamari zimmedari kya hai हमारी जिम्मेदारी क्या है हमारे रिलेशंस और हमारा वर्क वी परफॉर्म देयर टू द बेस्ट ऑफ अवर एबिलिटीज टू द बेस्ट ऑफ अवर नॉलेज टू द बेस्ट ऑफ अवर रिसोर्सेज फाइनल रिजल्ट्स, फाइनल आउटकम गॉड डिसाइड्स एंड आई प्रूव दिस विद लॉजिक जो यहां प्रोफेशनल्स बैठे हैं उन सभी को अनुभव होगा समटाइम्स वी हैव प्लान वेल आप सभी को भी अनुभव होगा समटाइम्स यू हैव रेड वेल प्लान वेल even executed well still you don't get the marks that you desire isn't it still you didn't get the marks that you desired yes or no and the professionals you did not get the results the outcome of the projects that you desired you did the best of paperwork best of planning best of execution you had the best team you had the best finances haiya na and the reverse experience is also true sometimes because of some time constraints or resources constraints we planned less we executed less did not have that caliber team still we got the outcomes and the results beyond our desire hi ana what does that mean have you ever given a thought to it that means that we have to put our best foot forward final results he decides so when you go into the professional field don't tell yourself my academics my planning my execution my team work was so good results have to be positive if success has to come to us ye aap bhi mat manna aapke team ko bhi mat karna energize them for success but never expect that all the time success has to come to you because it was my planning and my execution my team work results he decides because there are many factors which are in your control to get success sometimes semi control sometimes out of control main aapko batata hu the factors which are in your control to bring success planning and hard work which are in your control isn't it you can plan well you can execute well planning and hard work are the factors that are in your control for success some factors are not absolutely in your control they are into your semi control like getting getting good qualified team members in the team second finances they are semi control sometimes you say that i am getting a loan this month you may not get for another two months so they are not fully under your control and some factors which design the final outcome are absolutely out of your control your health your family issues government policies new laws they sprout out any time so you are in trouble 
So there are factors which are in your control, there are factors which are in semi-control of you, there are factors which are out of your control to design the final outcome. Accept that and you will not go into stress and tension because of less success or failure of that project. That okay, I tried my best, simple, I did not get it. So these are certain things that are mindful resilience. To take care of your pressure and tension and depression at your workplace, in your family life, in your social life and personal life. And whichever form of God that you believe in, chant the holy name every day. Ten minutes of chanting the holy name every day in the morning. University of Philadelphia, University of Pennsylvania, Dr. Andrew Newberg, Dr. H.G. Cohen, I'm giving you the names, you can go on Google and search it. By psycho neuro softwares, absolutely a scientific experiment. On 4,000 subjects, they came to a conclusion that when you chant the holy name of God in a posture of meditation, the hormones that are released in your body, what effects it produces, first effect, it can increase your memory power by 10 to 15 percent. Second effect, it can increase your willpower and confidence from 15 to 25 percent. Third, it increases your buffer capacity, that is capacity to absorb the shocks of life. And fourth, it increases the strength of your immune system. These are scientifically proved facts out of mantra job. So whenever you feel tensed, why you feel tensed? Let me talk scientific. Because when you feel tense, up gabra gaye, chinta mein aa gaye, to cortisol and epinephrine, two hormones are released in your body. So you start sweating, blood pressure goes high, heartbeat increases, you feel less strength in your legs. These are the results of stress and tension because of the effect of cortisol and epinephrine. At that time, if you chant the holy name, Bhagwan Krishna ka naam, Bhagwan Ram ka naam, wo to abhi 22 January ko puri purshvi pe fail jayega. Modern day science, because I'm talking science and spirituality both. I'm talking logic and faith both, because I'm a man of science and man of religion both. Modern day science has proved that when you chant the holy name in your state of stress, in your state of tension, in your state of depression, when cortisol and epinephrine are working in your bloodstream, at that time while chanting the holy name, your pituitary gland again releases a new hormone, which is called endorphin. That endorphin has the power to suppress the effects of cortisol and epinephrine, and you feel calm, you feel cool, you feel stable. Scientifically proved the effects and the power of mantra job. So in exams, when you're writing your exams and you find something tough, close your eyes for at least half a minute and high speed chanting of the name to decrease the effect of that stress and with your resilience, you will try to get into some good answer of it. Try it. Many have tried and many have been successful. So these are all the causes of stress and tension and these are all the remedies to it from different angles thank you very much for patiently listening to me and all my prayers for all of you thank you once again give them a big round of applause Thank you so much, Pooja Gyan Vachal Swamiji, for your all lifelong learnings. Uh, and this is the biggest takeaway of the SAID conference. May I request all the students on the last tour, why are you standing up? Please be sit down. Nobody will leave the hall until the Swamiji leaves the hall. Please be sit down. It's a curse. Now I would like to request CA Pursutam Khandelwal sir, Central Council Member and Conference Director and CA Sunil Sangvi sir, Vice Chairperson of Ahmedabad ICAI to felicitate Pooja Gyan Vatsal Swamiji with the bouquet and memento.
Now I would like to request C. A. Sunil Sangvi, sir, Vice Chairman of Ahmedabad Branch of ICAI, to extend their vote of thanks. In the last row, please take your seats first. Nobody will move in the hall. See, it's given me immense pleasure to extend our heartfelt gratitude to Sri Doctor. Gyanvasal Swamiji for gracing the conference of the CA Students International and discussing the delivery on the importance of the mental peace and the stress management. Swamiji, you will remember all these things. Success gives companions and not the friends. Failure is mandatory. See, we, everyone knows that there will be no invention in the world without any failure. Try to build up the ability to develop the human relationship. The book we will surely purchase and read the spiritual intelligence, the ultimate intelligence. We will avoid any shortcut and will never be unethical. We will never earn the money at any cost, like the example given. Apart from that book, The Spiritual Intelligence, The Ultimate Intelligence, the another book, The Eight Habits, that also I would request everyone to purchase and to read, go through that. It is my privilege, see, second time, I am lucky enough to second time give the vote of thanks of Swami Gyan Vassalji. One, first time I have given at the Pramukh Swami Nagar in second year. It is my privilege to extend a heartfelt vote of thanks to each one of you present over here. C. C. A. Sunil Bhai Talati ji, past president, C. A. Mangesh Kindre ji, the chairman of the SICV board, C. A. Pursotam Bhai Khandelwal, the conference director, central council member, C. A. Niren Bhai Nagri, C. A. Fenil Bhai Sa, chairperson of the Amlabar branch, C. A. Dr. Anjali Chokshi, the Vikasa team and the beautiful audience. Jai Swami Narayan. Jai ICI. Jai. Thank you very much. Just hello. Yeah. Hello, just telling you one last thing that I felt I should tell when I was like talking to the elders. You need to become four things in your life. One is excellent academics. Second is smart professionalism. Third is wonderful human being. And fourth is a staunch devotee of God. This four combination can prove a perfect formula for all success and peace in life. So make your parents proud, make your family proud, and make your nation proud because we want to make India a $5 trillion economy. Jo Hamare Pradhan Mantri Ji ka Sankalpe, Manani Narendra Modi Ji ka. We already are a 4 trillion. We just crossed it a few weeks back. Bhavishya mein 7 or 10 trillion dollar bhi banenge. Lekin to make India a viksit Bharat, aap ki zimme daari hai. And to make India a vishwa guru, wo hamari zimme daari hai. Saath mein rahenge. Thank you. Thank you so much beautiful audience for patience hearing. With the blessings of Puja Gyanvachal Swamiji, we are concluding this session. Thank you, thank you so much.